Whilst the world marvelled at Star Wars, on British television there appeared a science fiction series that would run for four years and be watched by up to 10 million households over the course of its run. The brainchild of Terry Nation, Blake Seven, has often been compared to Star Wars. And yet, while the not so special effects and wobbly sets of the former count against it, there can be no doubt Blake Seven had an edge in its writing. At the heart of its first three series was the Liberator, a huge and powerful battlecruiser that carries our heroes, or should that be anti-heroes, off to adventure. In this video we will take a look at this craft. The subtitle of this video was very nearly When Hair Dryers Attack. And yet that would be unfair as the Liberator was an interesting design. The model was designed by a set designer, Roger Murray Leach, with some minor adjustments made by special effects designer Alan Schoons to the green sphere at the stern. The first model was three feet in length and the whole details were added by model maker Martin Bauer in only two days. This model proved too heavy for the wire work necessary for filming, so two smaller models were built as well. The Liberator's design itself also proved to be a problem as it was awkward to use, and a number of episode directors chose to create their own Liberator footage, often using the smaller models rather than use the superior stock footage filmed by Ian Scones. And yet, the production team and the special effects department soldiered on. Built by an alien race known as The System, the Liberator, or more properly Deep Space Vehicle 2, was found apparently derelict after a battle by the prisoner transport London. This transport was carrying Blake and a number of prisoners. Having been deemed expendable by the transport's officers, our heroes were forced to board and investigate. This turned out to be a mistake. For the Federation, the Liberator was a warship, whilst her true size seemed to have varied with the needs of each episode. Based on the size of the London, the Liberator must have been over 2,500 feet in length, dwarfing the refit enterprise of Star Trek which was developed at around the same time. We can suppose all of this, which includes a collar of solar cells, to be given over to power, weapons and engineering, with much of everything forward of this point, command decks, cargo and crew accommodation. The Liberator was said to have had enough food aboard to feed a man for about a thousand years, so the cargo holds must have been sizeable. The battlecruiser was equipped with self-repair systems, neutron blasters, shields, called a force wall, and even a teleport, rather like Star Trek. Its engines were powered by a neutron drive, although there were references to an antimatter interface and even something called negative hyperspace. Whatever these phrases meant, the Liberator could reach a speed of standard by 20 without destroying herself. What was standard by 20? No idea, but the ships of the Federation were capable of a top speed of time distortion 10, which was equal to standard by 6, so the Liberator could outrun Blake's enemies and allow the series writers to play with cosmic distances and interstellar geography to their heart's content. The end of the Liberator came at the climax of the third series, when she was destroyed not by gunfire but by some interstellar fluidic particles which infected the ship. Incidentally, the name Liberator was given to the ship by the onboard computer Zen, which read Jenna's mind and found the name. Given the central theme of Blake 7, resistance against totalitarianism, it was a very fitting name. <laughs> 